Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to NGS. I am Jay Zahn, and I got a couple of replay matches to cast for you today. We got Dank Team versus Amazing. And we're going to get this rolling right on into the Nexus. Um, as these are replays, we have them queued up already and ready to go for you here. And so we're going to just jump right in. On the left, your blue team. It is Dank Team. You should GG. It's going to be on the Mouth Ale. Ha 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 ha. This is going to be on the ETC. Crystal Math is going to be on the Lunara. Asian Gamer on the... Um... Oh my gosh. It's too early in the morning. Too early in the morning for this game, ladies and gentlemen. It's Alarak, of course. Who else would it be? And um, Mac Attack is going to be on the Lucio. Meanwhile, on the right, it is amazing. Kazen is going to be on the Sonya. Um, Line Tex on the Alex Straza. Lasai will be back on that uh, Li Ming. Machiavelli will be on the Vala. And Hayes is going to be on the Tyrael. So, of course, uh, this being a replay, we don't get the opportunity to see the... Um, we don't get the opportunity to see the draft come out from both of these teams, but uh, we can see what each comp has uh, put together here. And I do like the comp coming out here from the side of uh, from the side of Amazing. Uh, quite a lot of Immortal Burn, especially uh, something that we don't see picked a whole lot, uh, nearly as much as I think we should on this map, is the is the Sonya. I still think she could be a very high priority here. Gonna do well in the solo lane. Is actually going against the Mouth Ale, but uh, one of the few warriors that can actually really go toe to toe with them. Meanwhile, we will see the slide in here from ETC. Um, Line Tex will turn around and get that circle of healing off, though. But right now, uh, Dank Team able to control the bottom lane with the sustain from Lucio. And uh, not a whole lot of counter pressure uh, to that circle of healing over on the side of Dank Team. They don't have a lot of. You know, AoE area damage to put down onto that other than the Lunara Q. Hey, is getting poked down quite low. We'll have to end Ruins out here. Take a quick look at the top lane. And uh, Kazen is indeed dominating the lane up here, uh, at least in terms of the pressure. Uh, but Yusha GG is actually doing a nice job of uh, keeping the lane at least somewhat close to even. Uh, Sonya, of course, one of the strongest bullies in lane. Um that uh, we have here in Heroes of the Storm. So overall, not doing too bad. Also, we see Line Tex on the side of Amazing. Uh, walking back, getting those safe circles of healing out. Um, actually, let's go ahead and get the talents up for you guys. We do see that uh, Line Tex is going with that, that uh, Q um, cooldown reduction there. So going to be trying to stay topped off on health so that uh, Q can come back in quicker. Meanwhile, we do see the Pog Rock for... Um, Ha 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 ha. Gonna be doing his best to stack those up. And get himself some extra healing later on in the game. Globes, of course, not quite as easy to come by here on Battlefield of Eternity as some of the other maps. If you do uh, win the Immortal, you are able to grab yourself a couple extra. And we will see the side of Dank Team going ahead and grabbing this camp before the Immortal spawn. Nice prioritization on this camp down here. Meanwhile, the side of Amazing just looking to uh, position themselves to rotate. And we will see the first Immortal spawning here. And right away, we're going to see Amazing going ahead and throwing a couple of their members to get on this. Not the heavy burn targets, though, that uh, they would like to have on it. But, uh, bo but both teams right now prioritizing more lane soak and uh, making sure that doesn't get too much value. Meanwhile, Line Tech's actually being caught out here. The boop not going to successfully... Yeah, well, it actually leaves her in the circle of healing, but that doesn't really matter. The side of Dank Team was ready to take them out there. And that's actually going to be First Blood going over to Dank Team here, as they'll be able to rotate up to the Immortal, get a lot of damage out here. We do see the ETC trying to zone here, trying to slow down some of the damage from Amazing, and uh, we'll be able to make it out scot-free. The Immortals, of course, will spawn out to the opposite sides, allowing for the easy burn. And the race is on here. Uh, I would think that uh, the, the burn would would go a little bit faster over to the side of Amazing. 
And uh, it's going to be awfully close here. 187. And it is going to go over to Amazing. So they are able to uh, sneak that out there. But so close. There's almost no shields left. And, you know, that really just comes down... That really just comes down to... Um, comes down to the side of dank team having good immortal burn uh in terms of raw numbers but it's a lot of it's slow burn the uh the lunara and the mouth ale are both going to give poison damage to the immortal which won't be applied directly like we see in some of the damage coming in from amazing so they're able to take that advantage um to be able to get them just a little bit of, of faster damage on it and get themselves this first immortal Meanwhile, we do see uh, just the just the front wall going down there. Hayes actually getting caught out. He's gonna have to Elder Ruins away, and we're actually gonna see the dragon, the dragon queen popped here. So um, interesting time to burn that long cooldown here from Line Text. They're not gonna be able to get too too much value off of it. They're gonna get a little bit of extra damage here on the fort. Maybe get the healing while well. Lasai staying in, but is gonna have to start backing off as ETC is coming after him. And we see, actually, the slide and the telekinesis not uh, connecting quite as they would like it. But they still are managed to get the pick. And all of a sudden, dank team. Two for nothing here. The beginning of this one. Meanwhile, gank attempt here for the side of Amazing. You should GG. We'll be able to uh, get back to the safety of his fort, however. Slight... Well, actually, XP is pretty much dead even here from both of these teams. A uh, little bit of a structure advantage coming out here for Amazing off of that first Immortal. But uh, nothing that they can't recover from here. We'll also see that uh, camp being taken here could be contested and will be Haze. Will Aldruins in there? They are able to get on the point. And ETC is going to actually be the first to fall here, proccing the resets for Lasai. That's going to be one reset, two resets, and three resets. And uh, three for nothing, just or three for one, I should say, as uh, Sonya goes down in the top. Not really a big part of that uh, actual end gauge there, but nice job for the side of uh, you should GG. I'm going to get them a little bit of an extra XP advantage here in the top. But Hayes actually rotates in to cover the XP, so should be able to get them back uh, a little bit of that XP lead. Meanwhile, in the bottom, they take uh, full full advantage of not only those kills but stealing the camp away and get themselves the first four of the game nice recovery here from amazing starting off just a little bit slow in this game but they have definitely taken it over here meanwhile alex straza getting stunned there we're gonna see ha 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 charging on in on to kazen you should gg getting very very low here and we're actually gonna see the level 10s come out and uh wow again the blow up coming in from this team between the uh between the burst damage potential of the leeming and the aller or the uh not the alarak the leeming and the sonya up on that front line it's just it's just a lot of damage coming in at once vala choosing to go with the um multi-shot build so it's good aoe damage and oh machiavelli actually getting hit by both of those stun circles that hurts especially when you don't have your healer around so uh, we will see they are able to get this immortal down and that's going to be a full shield immortal here going over to the side of amazing so starting to uh really put on the pressure here they also get a very well-timed camp up here in the top we'll be pushing along with this immortal they do have the camp pushing in the bot lane they are going to send the sonia down to go ahead and take care of that so that shouldn't be too big of an issue but between this camp and the full shield and immortal, not to mention that tens are just finally now coming in here for Dank Team, they should be able to capitalize off this. It could be keep front wall. If they get a couple kills, it could even be more here. A lot of the uh, uh, sanctification is still down at least, uh, but a lot of the heroics are up for the side of Amazing. Meanwhile, we do see the Counter Strike has already been used here. And uh, the telekinesis away will uh, be able to get them out for now. So we see counter strike, sound barrier, stage dive coming in from the ETC, uh, tormented souls, and the leaping strike coming out here from Crystal Math. But we do see them start to siege in here onto the top lane. 
Oh, and they gotta watch out. The stun circle comes in the rain to try and follow it up here from Machiavelli, but ultimately not gonna quite be able to get out there. Hay is actually gonna come in with the Aldruins to pressure, and they are looking at the keep here. It's it's being chunked down by the Immortal, and it uh, looks like that circle's not gonna quite be enough. The stage dive on the backside, but uh, we will see the Cleansing Flame come out to get her out of that sound barrier. Gonna give him a nice shield to be able to try to fight with here, but Malthael ends up being the first to fall. Vala, though, going down in response. Kazen coming in on the backside with a ton of damage coming out from the Wrath of the Berserker. Alarak is the next to fall off of that pressure from the backside. And Dank Team gonna have to back up here. A two-for-one exchange. Keep is uh, obtained by Amazing. And now they're going to be able to rotate out and start working on picking up these camps and painting the map red. Very nice engage there for the side of Amazing. They did a very nice job of positioning. The the flank the flank from uh, Kazen was a little bit more uh, influential there than the, the flank from that stage dive. But uh, both flanks, uh, I think, caught people a little bit off guard. But ultimately, uh, Kazen was the one who walked away with a lot of those, a lot more damage and a lot more pressure there. We will see the camp picked up just before the side of Dank Team is able to really get their crew in here to try to contest. Meanwhile, they do have that camp pushing in the top lane. That is going to be going straight to the core now. Going to be something that Dank Team is going to want to answer to. And this is a nice advantage here on Battlefield of Eternity for Amazing. Kind of puts Dank Team in a corner here where they're going to constantly have to answer to that top pressure. They do have the global for the, of the stage dive for ETC, but ETC doesn't have very good lane clear. He's going to struggle to uh, to clear a lot of this stuff out. And actually, rotation coming in here from Amazing, they were looking at maybe trying to cut them off here, but they will go ahead and back up with the Immortal spawning, and they're going to go ahead and get to work on this Immortal. Kazen actually out here zoning getting ready pops the uh, wrath of the berserker but doesn't quite find the mark with that ancient spear but uh meanwhile again we have etc trying to answer this in the top but again just such slow wave clear that it's gonna be rough meanwhile uh, amazing just focusing full on to this immortal and it's gonna be rough it's gonna be a rough uh Rough defense here. They are going to come in and give it a shot, though. Stage dive coming in as well. But the Sanctification and the Cleansing Flame are good to keep them healed up. You should GG the first to fall. They turn and start to focus on Asian Gamer. The Leaping Strikes, though. Machiavelli is actually going to fall on the backside of this poison damage. And Crystal Math gets out. However, Lasai starts popping off on the other side. As Mac Attack's going to have to hurry his way on out here with basically no health. So overall... A two-for-one exchange with the Lunara Leaping Strikes there. Get him out of trouble. And, and actually, ETC is not out of the woods yet. Lasai and Linetex are on the chase. And they are going to be able to get that finished off while we do see the... Uh, Amor the um, yeah, the Immortal pushing on into the uh, bottom lane here. So this is uh, this is a definite uh, definite win condition here for the side of Amazing. They are pushing in with this bottom fort or bottom keep, I should say, and they're going for it right now. Trying to defend here is Dank Team. They're trying to get out all the damage they can, but nice positioning here from Amazing as they are fighting with and around this Immortal. So uh, it makes it a little tougher with all the stun circles. For them to have to dance around over on the side of Dank Team. They get a lot of damage on it. But the keep is down. And they are looking towards the core. Dragon Queen is going to be popped here. Also have Cleansing Flame available. Uh, Stage Dive is going to come in. And hit multiple members here. Slowing them down. And the re-engage here. As we see Tormented Souls coming out. But he instantly starts backing up. From the uh, Sanctification coming down. We do see the Cleansing Flame has ended. But still, a lot of good healing coming out. Lasai going to go ahead and get that Calamity Kill on the backside onto Lunara. They'll be able to turn around and get themselves a 4 for nothing. And that is it. They turn their sights on the core. GG and game number 1 going over to the side of Amazing.
solid rotation, solid team fighting, and uh, overall just a really strong comp for Immor Immortal Burn. Now, that's not to say that the side of Dank Team didn't have good Immortal Burn as well. Uh, it just, like I said, it's just a little bit slower um, with, with mostly being poison damage, so a lot of it's not up front. That tends to favor the strategy of trying to go with more of a um, defend and poke it out on the other side while you're holding the defense, but uh, they didn't really have a great comp for that. So either way, we are going to be going in to game number two. We'll go ahead and update our score here with Amazing taking that first game. And our second map is going to be Valskaya Foundry. So we're going to jump right in onto this one. All right. Oops. We are focusing Hanzo, but we'll fix that in just a moment here. On the left, it is Dank Team with Mac Attack on the Uther. You should GG on the Gray Main. Crystal Math is going to be on the. Um, who is Crystal Math on there? I don't recognize that skin. Oh, on the Hanzo. Okay. Asian Gamer is going to be on the mouth ale, and ha 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 will be on the ETC once again. On the right, it is going to be Line Tex. Well, it's going to be amazing with Line Tex on the Ana. Machiavelli is going to be on the Cassia. Lasai is going to be on the uh, Leeming. Up on the top here, we'll have Hayes on the Muradin, and Kazen is going to be playing the Semuru here. A very interesting draft coming out here from Amazing. Definitely a lot of heroes that you don't see too often, so I'll be interested to see how they utilize these. I imagine we will see the nano boost probably on the Li Ming for the reduced cooldowns, uh, trying to get that extra damage burn. But one thing we are familiar with is the Psy on that um, Li Ming. We've seen quite a lot of that uh, in the two matches here from the side of Amazing so far this season. And the reset's usually pretty good, so uh, see if that comes in as a factor once again in this game. Meanwhile, both teams leaving their solo laners down in the bot lane, and we'll make the rotations from top to mid. Asian Gamer going to be uh, a little bit stronger here in lane, especially with the ability to heal off of all the clones. We will see him rotating to grab the camp there in the bot lane after getting a very favorable wave clear. Meanwhile, we will see both teams uh, just kind of poking back and forth here. Not really anything too major here. Let's actually bring up our talents so we can see what builds these guys are starting to work with here. Asian Gamer actually getting caught out here. ton of damage coming down onto him, but we'll be able to make it out with some help from Mac Attack and the rest of Dank Team. Well, I've seen uh, Hanzo be very strong uh, lately in the meta. Very A lot of damage. Uh, I would expect at least a lot of damage coming out from Crystal Math this game. You should GG. Should probably uh, try to get back to the safety of his fort. Is going to try to turn, but the stun is good along with the damage. But is able to make it out with just a sliver of health there. Rotation coming in from Dank Team to try to cover for him here will allow him to move back, but in the mid, we do see Kazen rotating to the mid lane to go ahead and push that out. So both teams make it some pretty nice rotation. Slight XP advantage for Amazing so far, but uh, just very, very slight. Maybe none at all. It might just be a figment of my imagination. And, uh, we will see Dank Team rotating to grab this uh, support camp, so We'll have a little bit of an advantage going into this first control point. Neither team uh, going directly onto the control point here. Again, both teams prior more prioritization on camps and lane soak here, which I think is pretty smart. The trickle out protector really not super strong on this map. You know, I don't think you really commit more than one or two 
um, in the early process here to try and get you some percentage. I mean, it, it, it forces a response eventually from Amazing to at least try to contest this. And they do actually put Samuru here on the point for a bit. And they will go ahead and push in now that the side of Dank Team has about 50% on the charge. So they're going to start poking away. But uh, I don't think they have a very strong um, straight up team fighting comp here. Uh, it's more of a poke and stall until you're ready to collapse in. Meanwhile, uh, ETC taking a ton of damage. Going to have to back out. Actually does not get out in time. Machiavelli, Machiavelli with that spear able to get the finishing blow and now they got to look out the resets again coming in for Lasai here Muradin is also going to fall and on the other side however we will see a one for one exchange but the beacon point is going to be controlled for the moment by amazing Azen Gamer going to try and get in here but takes a good amount of poke in response you know I say that they don't have a good team fighting comp but then they go and Prove me wrong. I get an excellent team fight there here in the early game. Level 7 has been picked up by both teams. We will see it is once again the Calamity build with Domination coming in for Lasai. Full Cocktail build coming out from Yusha GG. Uh, simple Geometry. Well, it, well, I should say everything but Simple Geometry coming out uh, for, uh, for uh, Crystal Math. But otherwise, taking those uh, scatter arrow talents. You know, we will see uh, overtime achieved here. 95 to 99%. So you can bet whoever wins this team fight will end up with the, with the uh, trig law protector. But both teams full committing to it. Again, advantage going over to Lasai as they trade out kills here with the, um, with the resets. However, it does look like the side of Amazing are going to be the ones pushed back. Machiavelli, the last one on the spot. ETC slides in, but so low are the members of Tank Team. And they end up getting dominated here on the point. Quick retreat and tap for Amazing. And they are able to take full advantage of that healing well uh, sustain. Ends up with this first protector. They do end up putting a couple members into it. They're going to have that sieging the mid while they split a couple of their members out to the outer lanes to get some extra XP. They will hit level 10 first, and we'll start to see these uh, heroics coming in. It is going to be the, uh, the Illusion Master coming in from Samuru. Not a big shock. We've seen a lot of Illusion Master style play, that pseudo global. It will be Avatar, Nano Boost. Wave of Force, and the Ball Lightning. Meanwhile, uh, level 10 still almost a full level away here for the side of Dank Team. So they are doing a nice job of getting out into lane, trying to side soak this. Uh, Asian gamers got to be careful here. Rotation coming to the bot lane for the side of Amazing. But ultimately, it looks like they're just looking to soak right now and the rotation is hidden here in response. Sleep Dark going out onto Asian Gamer there, but uh, right now, both teams just mostly looking for the XP and uh, not looking to for Well, actually, surprising uh, surprising extension in the lane there from Dank Team without their level 10s. Meanwhile, they will be able to pick it up, pick up that level 10 off of this mid soak. So we will once again see the Tormented Souls, Mosh Pit, and the Divine Shield, along with that Dragon Arrow. And I'll have to see what you should GG wants to take here. Um, Go for the Throat has been more of a uh, popularized talent recently, but with Avatar on the other side, could see the Cursed Bullet value, but they will be Go for the Throat. Many squishy members over on the side of Amazing, so uh, getting that extra damage out could be very beneficial. Meanwhile, they are going to charge in here onto Ha 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 Ha. He does end up taking a ton of damage. Machiavelli going in deep. Asian Gamer on the other side, though. Diving the back line with that Tormented Souls. Not getting the sustain I think he would have liked. D-Shield in response as they recommit. But Mac Attack, the first to fall, will still be healing from that Uther Ghost form. But ETC falls next. Asian Gamer getting very low. And uh, they're, still they're still going in after this. 
Lasai trying to get the resets, but now maybe went a little bit too far. You should GG charging in to get the counter kill here. Nice response there. Spend a much um, a wisely spent go for the throat there. Finishing blow there. But at the end of the day, they do end up with the uh, majority of the kills off of that exchange, and we'll get a little extra fort damage as their prize. Well, Sky Foundry has been criticized by some members of the HOTS community as being kind of a tough map to get um, to get a uh, win condition on. The, the uh, Triglav Protector, not a very strong map objective in comparison to many of the map objectives in this game, particularly in the late game, but Asian Gamer getting caught a little bit out of position here, and he will get blown up just before the side of Dank team can try to rotate to respond to help him. Nice gank there by uh, the damage dealers for the side of Amazing. 8-3 to three on the kill count right now, and uh, about a level lead, a little more than a level lead going into the mid game here. Anyway, we will see the next beacon point being in the top lane. Advantage to the side of Amazing as they do have their healing well up here in the top lane. And we will see both teams rotating out their respective lanes. And actually, the side of, of uh, Dank Team on the rotation here, they're going to be able to get the uh, get the camp and uh, steal that steal that turret. So nice rotation. They are going to get level 13 and should be able to rotate up here in time to uh, try to contest for this Triglav Protector. However, 70% on the charge right now, so definite advantage. Uh, for the side of Amazing. However, Asian Gamer going in once again with those Tormented Souls. They still have the Divine Shield available for him as well, but they're fighting right on the uh, the wall here with no minion help, and we will see them turn around here, but a four-man mosh pit coming out from ha 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 Do they have enough to still be able to follow it up? They kill the Ming. Osai goes down, but we will see uh, a four-man mosh turning into just one kill. Two for two exchange here. Dank team does get uh, some nice dividends there uh, from their heroics. However, uh, still a lot of damage over on the side of Amazing to have to worry about here. Um, so in this 3v3, fa fairly even 3v3, we'll have to see who ends up coming out with it. I think uh, a little more damage coming out from Machiavelli right now. Uh, Crystal Math, though, does have the potential, but uh, kind of missing some of these shots, not quite getting the poke damage he might like. Meanwhile, uh, all the dead members coming back, but a nice kill there coming in from Machiavelli and the Stormbolt coming in. Actually going to also catch Yusha GG. He's going to go down. And uh, the side of Amazing. Uh, getting some nice picks there as both teams started to get their, their uh, dead memberships back. They're also going to grab the support camp really quickly. Should net them the 16. And we will see uh, that 16 advantage and the Triglav Protector for the side of Amazing. They're actually going to look to push other lanes other than the, uh, the top lane. And I like this because you know 100% sure that the next control point is not going to be in the top lane. They also already have the advantage of having the healing well out of the top lane. So if they rotate out to these other lanes and are able to get the healing wells and maybe the forts down in these other lanes... That's going to be a good advantage for them on the next control point. So they do rotate directly to the bot. They're going to get a ton of damage out in this uh, structure area and get the fort. And if they want, they could even rotate to the mid to uh, get that as well. But they are going to be looking towards the fort front or the keep front wall here instead. Also a good call. A lot of extra um, XP from this front wall. Either way, though, they're just, uh, in general, getting some nice advantages from uh, being out here. I'll actually see uh, Muradin changing over to the gunner position 
just outside the range of the uh, of the turret is uh, just able to shoot off those AOE abilities and try and support some extra pressure. So they will get uh, most a uh, good portion of the front wall of this bottom keep, and we'll have to see if that pays off. You know, if the next control point here isn't bought, then that's very that's a very nice uh, spawn for the side of amazing off of that uh, strategy. If it spawns in the mid, they don't really get anything extra out of it, but uh, we'll just have to see. Meanwhile, uh, both teams gonna contest here with uh, level 16 being picked up here for dank team. They are gonna press the issue here. You should GG coming in from behind. is gonna come in and get some nice damage out. The slide coming in. Machiavelli caught out here is gonna be taken down. And we will see you should GG also getting, uh, getting a kill on the backside. They go ahead and use the mosh pit to trap in Murden as well. A four for nothing exchange and dank team coming back in here as we head in towards the late game. And we are going to see the control point is indeed in the bot lane. In the mid, we will see dank team pushing in here and going to get some damage on the uh, the fort. As uh, ha 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 ha. Zone out K's in a bit here. Crystal Math with that uh, the scouting arrow, able to reveal Samuru's true positioning. Mid fort going down here to the side of a dank team. They're also going to get some nice damage here onto the bottom fort. Asian Gamer, though, taking some harassment here from Kazen. But the rotation is coming in from dank team. And actually, uh, ETC looking to go in on the backside, looking to cut him off. And, he, uh, and the nice swap there, the Illusion Master. Able to swap out to safety. Mac Attack taking quite a lot of damage here. Gonna have to try to heal himself up. And the Retreat coming in here from Dank Team. But they've got a long way home. Uh, if the side of Amazing wants to pursue this, they decide not to. But all in all, about a half level lead now out for the side of Dank Team. They also get two forts out of that exchange, so... Now, you talk a little bit about when a team gets a nice advantage, they get some kills, they win a good team fight. What is the number one thing you really want to be able to gain out of that? And really, it's it's structures. So the side of Dank Team take a nice fight, they get it four for nothing, and they get two forts out of it. So that's pretty much uh, pretty much what you would what you would appreciate getting. Still a slight structure advantage though for the side of Amazing. That top fort still very healthy. Where on their side, where the top fort for Dank Team is uh, very very low. They're actually looks like Hayes is gonna jump in and breathe on this. Got quite a lot to clear out here as well. But they are they are winning the race to twenty by just a little bit here. So <clears throat> they should be able to pick that up first. That's a positional advantage for this Triglav Protector. Uh, but it looks like the side of uh, Amazing, not really concerned with that. They're actually going to rotate to the top here and look to get themselves some keep pressure in response. I really like this call. They know that uh, you know, they, they know that the last team fight didn't go their way. So instead, they're just going to split push. They're going to let them get some of, that, uh, some of that progress. But they are going to send four out back here. For the side of Dank Team, they do not have Uther though, so no healer for the side of Dank Team in this defense. But they are getting the charge onto the Triglav Protector, so uh, that should this is going to be a free Protector for them, as level 20 is in. So if they can just defend here without losing any members, this will be a nice trade for the side of Dank Team. But we'll have to see. Uh, going to be very close. In terms of uh, the level 20s being picked up. They will go ahead and pick that up. Meanwhile, they are rotating in. Uther is in the protector. He's heading towards the bot lane. And the rotation coming in a little bit quicker. Meanwhile, uh, they're trying to catch out the Cassia. And they, uh, they <laughs> we will see the interrupt there. Wave of Force able to interrupt the Mosh Pit. Asian Gamer now being caught out a little bit far. Does pop the Tormented Souls to try and get the extra sustain. All this going on, Uther has actually hopped out of the Triglav Protector to try and come up here and get the extra heals. But we will see the resets coming in big five, or uh, I should say four for nothing. 
As actually, I, I take it back. This whole time, Uther has still been in the protector. I thought he had come out. I, I, I guess I was mistaken about that. But uh, man, a huge advantage gained for the side of Amazing there. A four for nothing exchange. Malthale returning uh, with that level 20 talent. So got to be careful here because got a long, long death timer. But I think this is probably the end of the game. Uther not going to be able to take down the core fast enough. Does get through the keep, but the core falling too fast over on the side of Dank Team. Malthale not going to be able to stall it out enough, and the base race is going to be won big time here by Amazing. And they're going to take the two-game win and the domination. A little bit of a strategic slip-up there from Dank Team at the end, leaving the Uther in the Triglav Protector, not bringing him out to the team fight. Uh, Dank Team trying to extend a little bit too far try and force without their healer there in the mid I, I can understand where they thought they had um machiavelli caught out there on the cassia but uh, they just they extended a little bit too far but overall you know you got to look at uh the big picture here for dank team uh amazing one of the stronger teams here in b uh, b division west they took some really nice team fights against them they took them uh late into both games here and uh, were very competitive on both maps and so uh, you know, even though they got dominated here by um, by Amazing, uh, overall they looked they did not look bad at all. You know, they they didn't get uh, they didn't get demolished for sure. Um, Seventeen to nine on the kill count for that last game. A lot of extra a lot of damage coming out um, from Machiavelli there. Actually, very nice game on the Cassia, um, and of course. Uh, a fair amount of damage coming out from Asian Gamer. Uh, maybe not the the numbers you'd like to see by Crystal Math there on the Hanzo. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, we've seen a lot of comments on how most people think Hanzo is a little bit overtuned in the damage department right now. Um, I think that that's actually uh, okay because of the nature of his damage being so um, so skill shot based, where. Um, you know, you only get really high numbers if you got good aim. But uh, nice game coming out from both of these teams. Very competitive. And uh, be looking forward to seeing how these two teams uh, do in the rest of the season. I would definitely say that uh, Amazing, one of the top contenders in B Division West. And uh, Dank Team also going to be looking to uh, make a name for themselves in this division as well. We'll have to see how they perform. Uh, in the rest of the season but uh, that's gonna be it for me guys for this replay cast i got another one coming up for you here in just a few moments so i'm gonna um, go ahead and cut off the stream and get it restarted we're gonna have uh guys gems versus can't stop won't stop so be back in just a couple of minutes don't go anywhere <laughs> 